I wanted to talk on and touch on before we do come to a close in the last part of this show on our set pieces and what we believe we've seen changed. Um, we have 100% seen changes in our set pieces. Um, we've seen changes and differences between our set piece takers, which before Dubai were Trossard and Martinelli, that now have turned into Saka and Rice. We've seen difference of um, style of where we, how we're taking our set pieces and our free kicks as well, by the way, not just corners, this is, yeah. Um, Rice has been identified as being very technically gifted and I think that is absolute credit to him as a footballer. But the one player that, uh, sorry, the one person that needs credit for this is Nicolas Jover. Now, Nicolas Jover is our set piece coach and last season and the season before, we saw huge, huge improvements as a collect, as a football club, taking corners, defending from corners, attacking from corners, and also free kicks likewise. We were in a position not long ago where they were absolutely dire, and it was really actually quite embarrassing when we got a corner. We might as well have just basically kicked it off for a goal kick and let them start again. It was that embarrassing. But we have seen massive changes since Dubai. And although yesterday it wasn't the key to how we won the game and we scored a lot more goals, goals from open play, um, against West Ham, it was really, really obvious. And against Palace, by the way, at home. Um, we have some absolute monsters now that can score and defend from set pieces. Gabriel, William Saliba, Ben White, Kivior, Kai Havertz, Declan Rice. All those players are over six foot. They're between six foot and six foot five, those players I've mentioned. So we've got absolute monsters in there that can be an aerial threat. But also, they give a physical presence. And the attributes they use are like the old school Arsenal teams that have won stuff over the years, like Tony Adams, Martin Keown, Steve Bold, Sol Campbell, Colo Torre, Patrick Vieira, Gilberto Silva, even players like Dennis Burkamp, who was a tall, strong individual that could hold their own. We're starting to see those attributes come back into play. And it wasn't long ago, people, that we had Socrates and we had Mustafi and we had Skilachi and Bellerin. Players like that, when you're looking around the team and you're like, Granite Chak is probably our only hope here. That was a worry. Now we're starting to see some presence in this side. And that for me as a spine is only going to be a good thing. But actually it starts to show how important it is from set pieces, defending and attacking them. So that for me is a massive, massive plus. So what I wanted to do was give you a little bit of an example here of what I'm talking about, where our improvements have become with our set pieces, because I'm a huge, huge fan of what I've seen from this so far. I feel that we were in a position defending and attacking from corners where we have massively, massively seen improvements. Now, let me take you down to the bottom left-hand side of the screen here, OK? I'll move the football around so you can see it. Um, so this is the corner taker. This is, imagine, Leandro Trossard taking corners. And this was before Dubai, OK? This was where we were setting up. We'd also, we'd obviously have two of your quickest players here where I'm moving towards the end that just in case they go on the counter, they can keep up. You normally have someone outside the box that's usually maybe a Declan Rice or Jorginho or somebody who can actually have a dig in a kind of Fabregas or Thomas Riziki type role here where they can actually have a dig from outside the box. And then the rest of the players are in the box trying to attack the football, right? So... Leandro Trossard was taking our corners. Sometimes it was Martinelli. This was before Dubai. Now, we actually did score some goals and we were one of the best at set pieces still. But this is where we've taken it to another level. Now, what was happening was Leandro Trossard was taking corners and we were trying to do the old school Tony Adams and Steve Bold flick-ons. And what I mean by that, for those that are uh, too young to remember what that means is you hit it near post to this guy here. He then flicks the ball to your striker to head it in. Now, we scored lots of goals like this under George Graham with Tony Adams and Steve Bold. We had the understanding that we was one of those that were going to flick it on for the other centre forward to pull it in. Or, in the case of Steve Bold and Tony Adams, the other centre half. Now, that was trying to be worked in set pieces and it was trying to be worked within training. But what was happening a lot was we weren't beating the first man. So the first man was being hit and it would go off for another corner. And we try it again, hit the first man, go off for a corner, try it again. There was actually one game, and I don't remember, I think it was maybe Brighton or Wolves. We actually hit the first man three times and he just kept heading it off. It was just embarrassing. The other thing that was happening was we weren't beating the first man and it would just be booted out for a throw in. But actually there was a couple of games, right? And if our opposition would have been 
uh, had the top quality, which some of them obviously will have in the Man Cities and Liverpools if we were still working this way, is being flicked on and then they'd be able to go on the attack and hit us on the counter-attack. Now, this was happening with Trossard and Martinelli, and it was nothing to do with their lack of technical ability because they're two fantastic players, right? And we've proven this season already how fantastic that they've been, right? But when you look at it, things have changed massively now, which is why I'm going to take you over to the other side. Top right-hand side, you've got the football here. This guy taking the corners is no longer Trossard or Martinelli, it's Declan Rice. And this is it's very, very similar to only last week when we played West Ham. Already, the starting position of Arsenal is different. The reason it's different is because most teams zonal mark now, OK? So at the moment, it looks like no one's marking each other, but because that's because it's zonal. And what was happening here against West Ham is all of our players were far post. Every single one of our players was near the near post. Now, of course, they're being marked in their zonal positions. It's not like all of them are standing together, but it looks like that at the moment. And what Declan Rice was doing, OK, was he was hitting some of what I call as the perfect corners. Now, the worst corners you can take are ones that don't hit the first man that come around this area and just get cleared. The other corners that are really poor is when they go way too close to the goalkeeper and he just catches it. And the other ones that I can't stand are the ones that go way over the top and they're absolutely awful and no one's there. They're the three worst corners that you can take. And we've seen in the past, probably in the last 10 years, some of the worst corners that Arsenal have taken have probably been in a variety all of those things beat the first man no go over the top to the fear part far post over hit oh it's gone into the keeper's arms we've seen that quite a lot and that can happen any game of time any game of time right sometimes you just get it wrong in corners but what i'm seeing from Declan rice and bakayu saka who are now the two corner takers is the ball's coming over it's in line with the penalty area or the penalty spot too far away from the goalkeeper and it's hitting the far post around here and what that's allowing is for any of the defenders to be put out of the game completely. All of these guys are no longer in the game, OK, because the ball's completely on over their heads. The goalkeeper doesn't know if to come out here because he's going to get caught if he misses it for us to put it in. Or he doesn't know if to track back and try to look to look to go for it there. So he's just keeping his ground and standing his ground and he's watching the ball and he's watching where the ball's going now, the goalkeeper. And that's a real vulnerable spot for him. And what we're seeing is the ball, in this case to Saliba in the first West Ham goal, is being won by the header and it's gone into the goal. Now, this has been won by Saliba here, but we've also seen it in the opposite way. So Saka over this corner, it's gone really long and the ball's gone over to Gabriel, who's put it in. And we're also allowing for Kai Havertz, Ben White, um, Gabriel and Saliba, and in this case, now he's playing Kivior, to be six foot to six foot five gentlemen that are 100% at an advantage of winning the ball in the air. Now, these guys together sometimes get in each other's way. Look how clustered it is here. Yeah. But what happens is as the ball comes across from Rice and it gets to about here, the players start to attack it. So all of these players here from the far post are now running towards it. And it's so clustered in there, it ends up like this. And then what happens is it gets to them. Now, don't get me wrong, the, the, the West Ham and the Burnley defence were, were going towards this now. So what you end up with is a complete and utter cluster of ev all of our players that are defending and attacking the ball. But there's been an advantage for the, for the Redmen of Arsenal to get ahead of it, to head the ball in. Now, that has been happening now for the last three or four games. And we've seen that with the likes of Crystal Palace, where we won 5 0. We've seen it with the um, West Ham game. And then we saw it against Burnley. Now, there were set pieces and corners that we didn't really score all five from. And we did score quite a few against Palace and West Ham. But that's the key for me is we've completely changed it. So when people are watching the videos of us taking set pieces, because, of course, nowadays with technology that happens, we're getting to a stage now where clubs are up against us thinking they've completely changed the way they're going here. We don't know if they're going to go near post. We don't know if they're going to go penalty spot. We don't know if they're going to go far post. But we've really caught teams out in the last games through that. And big up, by the way, to Gabriel and Saliba because they're two players that actually are a massive threat from corners, but they back it up. It's not like, oh my God, this guy's a lump, but he actually can't put it in. So I actually believe we need a hell of a lot of... Um, credit given to our set-piece coaches and our coaching staff here and the work that we did in Dubai. 
Because that, for me, has been absolutely key and vital moving forward. I've been so, so impressed with what I've seen by the changes. And I think sometimes my biggest frustration with managers over the past, like Arsene Wenger and at times, you know, Emery, was they consistently keep trying something and are stubborn until they want to change it. And I think since Dubai, we've got together and thought we can't keep doing this. You can't lose to Fulham and West Ham. We've got to go now and beat the likes of those teams. And this is how we're going to do it. Ben White's now going to be inverted. Our set pieces are going to change. We're going to allow for some of our assets in the box to actually get their heads on it. Declan Rice is going to take our corners. We've recognised in training that he has got technical ability from dead ball situations. Bakayi Saka is going to get back onto corners, which he's taken before, and some of our free kicks. It isn't going to be Martin Erdegaard, Trossard or Martinelli every time. It isn't going to be, oh, let's just hit the first guy. We're actually going to change it up. And I've been really impressed by that. And I think we deserve a lot of credit from that. And I think so does the manager, the players, because they're making it happen. And it shows that there's telepathy and there's understanding that the players are still playing for the manager and they're listening to him. And also the coaching staff. You know, we took Nicolas Jovet from Man City as a set-piece coach and things have improved 100%. It started to get a little bit stale and we've changed it up again. That's all I can ask, is that when things aren't working, change it up. And I've always had the... Um, saying of, if plan A isn't working, make plan A better or change to plan B. And I don't think we've made plan A better at times previously. And I don't think we've ever had a plan B. I'm starting to see that a bit more now. We're starting to see Kai Havertz and Trossard as a bit of a plan B interchanging. We're starting to see that if plan A you can't make better, then you can start to look at little different things that can change things up. Ben White now inverts. Kivior doesn't. The left back no longer inverts. It's Ben White doing it. That's a change. That's a plan B. So I'm actually really quite impressed by what I've seen. I really am. And I think it needs needs to be praised and needs to be highlighted. So I'm really, really interested in your thoughts on that.